What's up YouTube peeps? I'm here at the gym and I'm about to hit a push workout. So, five minutes on the rowing machine, I'm gonna go through some band stretches, some mobility work, get the shoulders warm, and then we're getting into it. The workout, I'm gonna post a screenshot now. I hope you enjoyed that. So please do take a screenshot of that. This is today's workout. I'm gonna put the words underneath, things that I'm focusing on underneath, and I'll probably do a little bit of a commentary as well. So enjoy the workout and get after it, get better. So I said I would come on and I would do a voiceover for the video and kind of talk about the exercises and how I'm doing them. So the first one we're talking about is the incline dumbbell chest press. Now the reason why I do this first is simply because that my top, the top portion of my chest uh, isn't the, the greatest and it's not the, the most well developed. So I really want to go into this workout when I'm fresh and hit this section of the muscle. Now what? often switch when I'm doing my push workouts between incline and flat press. So it might be an incline dumbbell or it might be an incline barbell, incline um, chest press machine, but then the next time I come to the workout I'll do flat. So this is the reason why I do this and put the incline first over kind of just doing the flat movement first. So I'm really trying here, keep the dumbbells open and keep them apart just to really keep the tension in the chest. The second one I'm going through is the barbell overhead press. Now you can see from the video I'm actually going behind the neck. This does get a lot of bad rep that you shouldn't do it because it's going to cause shoulder impingements, shoulder injuries, and it's all down to, it's all case specific, okay? If you've got the mobility to do this and you can perform this movement with no pain and no injury, then go ahead and do it. You'll activate all three heads of the shoulder and you'll love it. I supersetted this with the flat cable fly. Now, the reason why I'm kind of hitting supersets is I'm just increasing the intensity a little bit on my workouts and I'm making sure that I'm pushing the body just a little bit more just to increase the volume and increase the calorie burning. So we are on this 12 week or 13 week uh, shred with the summer shredding program, Christian Guzman's competition. We're in the online competition and we're just really trying to see what we can bring over the course of 90 days. Now here, I've got a slight bend in the arms and I'm really focusing on, as I'm lowering down, the eccentric portion of the movement, as I'm lowering down, I'm trying to keep it under control, under tension the whole time. I'm not allowing the weights to touch at the bottom, so it's keeping the chest in um, under tension the whole time. Do have a bit of a pose here. It's kind of the first time actually, and I spotted it on the camera, that I could actually see some veins coming in across the chest and across the shoulders, which was really motivating for me. It's not all the time that you see them, so when they actually are coming in, it's a bit of a spur on and it gives you a bit of a kick. So with the overhead shoulder press, I do like to have my hands a little bit closer than some people go. So it's more of a, a shoulder press grip rather than a snatch grip. So I'm a little bit closer than uh, normal, potentially, hands slightly inside, it gets a little more triceps as well. It's kind of like a, a French press, but everyone's different, so go with what works for you. The other thing that I focus on here, and this is something that's come through trial and error with the pec fly, is I always used to have my hands above my shoulders and cause a lot of shoulder trouble. So after research, after practice, after scaling back, dropping the weight and then increasing from um, practice and learning, I've now got the hands coming in line with the chest and almost having the cables itself above the elbow line. So all that does is it keeps the tension in the chest a lot more, it takes it away from the shoulder a lot more and you really get a good squeeze and a good contraction from it and a good pump basically. From there, the next superset was single arm tricep extensions. Now on the actual screenshot, it was just tricep extensions, but I did single arm because I like to highlight my weaknesses. Now one thing that I know is my left side is a lot weaker than my right. So when I'm doing tricep extensions, I really wanna push my left tricep to catch up with my right. I didn't get that on footage because I was close to the wall and it would have been a horrible camera angle. So I'm just really focusing on pushing down, squeeze the triceps at the bottom. Again, you can see some kind of definition coming in, but it's really motivating to see that. From there, I supersetted this with lateral raises. And to be honest, I was 
Lateral raising with the dumbbells is great. I really like it. Um, it allows you to get good momentum as you're going up to the top. But sometimes I find that that momentum is lost a little bit and you don't have the muscle under tension the whole time. This is where cables can be a really good idea and substitute for this. But what I really liked today in this workout was getting the band and using a band just increased the resistance as I was going through the movement. So there was tension on the band the whole time. But as I was raising up, the tension was getting more and more and more the higher I got. And I really liked the idea of this. So I definitely recommend if you've got bands at your gym or if you've got bands at home, try lateral raising with just the bands because it was a frigging pump and a half. And again, I could see the, the veins coming in which was really motivating. So guys, keep up the good work.